I do not own Biker Mice from Mars, Initial D, or any of its characters. No money was made from this production. Biker Mice from Mars belongs to Rick Unger, and Initial D belongs to Suichi Shigano. Biker Mice from Mars, Mountain Drift. Chapter 14. Mika. The next morning. Manuel woke up from his sleeping bag on the floor. The sun was shining in through the apartment window like it did each morning when he had a day off. Manuel covered his face, trying to shield his eyes from the light as he got up out of his sleeping bag. Throttle was still sound asleep. Wow. Guess that race down the mountain took more out of him than I thought, he muttered, then sighed. He got up and got ready to fix breakfast, but he stopped for a minute and gazed at Throttle. He remembered how Throttle had teased him last night about being afraid of competition. Throttle's attitude and friendliness reminded him a lot of his brother. Hector. It was a welcome change from some of the things he had to deal with from his mother and father. Even though both of them were trying to salvage their relationship with him, it was difficult to do. Their old habits of fighting with each other didn't help things, either. One of the reasons he tried to avoid talking to them. He missed Hector. Life wasn't easy after he died in that car accident. That was four years ago, yet it seemed like it was only yesterday. Manuel was pulled back to reality as he heard a knock at the door. He quickly got over and checked who it was through the door's people. It was Takami and Mika, and Mika didn't look too happy. He opened the door slowly and cautiously, still in his pajamas. I guess you told her? Manuel asked. I had to, Takami replied. Somehow, she knew something was bothering me last night, and when I told her, she wanted to see for herself, so that she didn't believe me. Besides, I can't keep secrets from Mika. I thought I told you that, Manuel. Manuel heaved out a heavy sigh, then let them in. <sighs> okay, but she'd better not scream like Itsuki did, or you're both out the door, Manuel warned firmly. Mika walked into the apartment and then peeked around the corner. She saw Throttle asleep on the bed. She was breathless. Then she smiled one of those sweet, innocent smiles only a girl could give. <gasps> she silently cooed. Uh, he's so cute! Takami and Manuel nearly fell face first onto the floor when they heard her say that. Okay, well, I guess I'd better wake him up, check on his injuries, and get myself dressed. Otherwise, we'll be late for that meetup at the Riverside Golf Course that you two wanted to go to. Manuel then walked up next to the bed and put his hand on Throttle's shoulder, gently shaking it. Throttle woke up, his eyes opened slowly. He got his sunglasses off the headboard and put them on. You okay? Manuel asked as Takami rounded the corner to the kitchen. Yeah. Throttle replied. He then noticed Mika peeking around the corner. Hey, who's that? Mika then walked forward and introduced herself. Oh, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to seem intrusive. My name's Mika Wahara. I'm Takami's friend. Sorry, I didn't mean to pry, but I could tell something was bothering Takami last night. And he told me about how you and how Manuel found you on the mountain, and... <laughs> uh, it's okay. I know how that can be. I can't keep secrets from my girlfriend, either. Throttle laughed. Takami breathed a sigh of relief. He was afraid Throttle would be mad. Well, Throttle, after I fix breakfast, I'm going to go hang out with Takami for a bit. Manuel said. You know how to use a phone? Yeah. Throttle answered. Manuel then gave him a prepaid cell phone. If you need anything, just call the number I programmed to speed dial on this, and I'll be back as soon as I can. He said. It links with my Blackberry. Got it. Throttle said, sitting up on the bed. Manuel then went to fix breakfast. 
Meanwhile, outside the apartment. Are you sure that apartment building is where he is? Limburger said to Grease Pit and Carbuncle in the van. Oh, he's there. My stunner is getting him inside. Carbuncle said. This is no mistake. The only problem we have is the current residence of that apartment. He didn't interfere with our plans, your cheesiness. However, I'd avoid leave the apartment on a regular basis from my spy cams as observed. Very well. Limburger said. You'll just have to wait until he's alone. Then grab him when he's still vulnerable. Do whatever it takes to get that rodent, and deliver him to me. <laughs>